Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course Nutrition for the Family. This is the seventh module in which we are studying about the nutrition care for the children. This is the second lecture of this module in which we shall be studying about the dietary guidelines and the nutritional problems of preschoolers. In the last lecture, we had studied about the growth and development during the early years of life. And then we studied about the nutritional requirements of macronutrients that is carbohydrate, protein, fat. And then we studied about the micronutrient requirements about minerals and vitamins. And then we studied about the relationship of nutrition and infection. And lastly, we studied about the food requirements of the preschoolers. And in this lecture, we shall be studying about the dietary guidelines for the growth and development of preschoolers. And then we will also study about various nutritional problems of preschoolers. So let's start. The diet of the preschooler should be adequate in the quantity and the quality of various nutrients. In addition to the milk which is recommended, the preschooler child, they should have two small servings of protein rich foods such as eggs or other non-vegetarian foods. But if the child is a vegetarian, he can take pulses, paneer or cheese to meet the protein requirements. And when the child is around 18 months old, uh, good finger foods they can be given to the child such as carrot sticks they can be given. And uh, along with that, if we give curd which is a probiotic in the diet it will decrease the incidence of diarrhea and cold among these children and uh, proper elimination of the waste it is usually maintained if the diet is having good amount of fruits and vegetables and whole grain products they are given to the child and these fruits and vegetables they not only supply vitamins and minerals they do contain good amount of antioxidants also and the diet should include a variety of foods the child who is taught to eat everything on his plate they are more likely to enjoy good health and when we compare it with the the kids who pick and choose the child they should have access to the items from all the food groups on regular basis the food preference of the child should be taken into consideration. Preschoolers, they, uh, they are the kids who can relate a number of concerns about the food intake. They may have disinterest in certain foods which may last from few months to few years. The food preferences, they, it changes from time to time, from day to day, from week to week. So at the same time, certain foods, they are accepted when they are cooked and served in a particular manner. Their appetite is erratic. So the child may relish one meal, but he can refuse other. So in spite of that, these preschoolers, they enjoy a food which is well prepared, which is attractively served and simple, unmixed type of dishes, which are neither hot, nor very cold they are well accepted by them so small portions of new foods they should be introduced with the already well accepted foods and the disliked food it should be mixed with their favorite food the balance is needed to be maintained between the hard and soft foods and strong and mildly flavored foods in the meals uh, the meals they should be slightly seasoned so that uh, their taste gets better and 
child likes it well so the new food it should be introduced when the child is actually hungry the colorful foods they add variety and they stimulate interest for example chapatis or puris they can be made into different colors with incorporation of green vegetables or it can be served in attractive plates and the flavor and the color of milk it can be changed to encourage the child to drink milk we can always make a food into different shapes to make it interesting the food should be such that it is easily manipulated by the child and it is easily handled because these preschoolers they are generally clumsy so the finger foods like cutlets or the hard boiled eggs small sandwich rolls or the whole fruits they are easy to pick and uh, eat specially at school so the child should never be forced to eat more than he can take the person feeding the child with the food he should not show his uh, dislikes about the food in front of the child this may lead to rejection of food by the child regularity of meal timings is very essential because this leads to development of good eating habits among preschoolers different cooking methods can be tried by the parents and uh, new attractive combinations they actually encourage the child to eat more the child should never be crying while taking food and that atmosphere should be pleasant it should be peaceful and it should not be having any kind of distraction so therefore the tv and the computer and gadgets like that they should be turned off during the meal time so that the child can enjoy the meal and the water it should be given to the child very frequently because the child may not remember to drink the water regularly so and uh, to the very small children we should not give unripe banana apple or uh, some nuts which could be difficult to swallow and they can actually choke the child so the children they should also be discouraged to take processed and junk food because once the such kind of habit develops so it is very difficult to get rid of and most of the food served to the child it should be from the family pot only and uh, so small pieces of food which can be easily handled with the spoon fork or hand it should be served to the child and due importance should be given to uh, physical comfort uh, so that we can give some special uh, cheer to the child and deep unbreakable bowls they can be used to serve the food to the child and we can always give him cutlery which is having blunt edges so that the child can go for self feeding and vegetables are usually disliked by majority of preschoolers and there could be over consumption of sweets and uh, it should be acceptable and uh, the the parents they should not make a very big issue out of these things but one uh, has to be conscious because over consumption of sweets can lead to over intake of calories and the child can become overweight the routine home based diets they are adequate for the growth and development of the child if they are calorie dense and they are given in small feeds frequently but many a time in spite of having enough food in the house which is good to provide adequate nutrients to the child again the growth can be faltered this can be due to feeding the young child with the bulky staple foods which fill the child's tiny stomach but it kills the hunger without meeting the energy needs and if we are uh, feeding the child small stomach infrequently it can also affect the growth of the child protein which is present in the foods of plant origin as we know it is not complete so it because it lacks certain essential amino acids therefore judicious combination of cereals and pulses 
is needed to improve the quality of protein in the diet and addition of milk to the vegetarian diet it improves the quality and quantity of proteins along with that it supplies calcium in best absorbable form also it is also a good source of b vitamins too and overall need for the nutrients as we know it increases throughout the growth period but there will be periods when the growth is comparatively slow and the need of certain nutrients therefore shall be reduced proportionately and children they reflect these changes in the need by fluctuation in their appetite but this may cause anxiety to some parents unless such period is prolonged or it is accompanied by the signs of undernutrition such as lethargy fatigue and increased susceptibility to infection it should not cause concern to the parents and special care it is needed for feeding the children who are below 2 years of age because they cannot ask for food and they have not learned to eat themselves also and there are some preschoolers who are overweight uh, they will be at increased risk of health so parents they play an important role in quantity and quality of food which is provided to the child and therefore if they are creating a schedule for the eating they will be helping the child with good health the inadequate intake of food by the preschoolers be because of any kind of reason be it some physical cause health reason because of any infection or some psychosocial issues they result in many nutritional problems which if we do not correct it can actually affect the growth and development of the child so let us study about some common nutritional problems of the preschoolers iron it is an essential mineral for hemoglobin in the blood the poor iron status and anemia it is most common between the ages of 18 to 24 months when the physical and mental growth and development they are rapid and large amount of iron it is needed to support these processes the major cause of iron deficiency is and in uh, sufficient intake of iron in the diet and what could be the reason of inadequate intake of iron it can be due to either low intake of total iron or a low intake of bio available heme iron the heme iron is the iron which is found in non vegetarian sources but if we are taking uh, iron from the vegetarian sources it is not that bioavailable so failure to eat foods which are rich in vitamin c as vitamin c it enhances the absorption of uh, iron inside our body and uh, if the person is taking only non heme iron uh, which the iron which is coming from the vegetarian or the cereal uh, foods or a high consumption of substances that interferes with the absorption of iron such as uh, the food which is high in fiber or uh, and taking tea so that uh, the absorption of iron gets hampered so uh, all these reasons uh, can cause uh, low uh, iron status in the body so the toddlers with the low iron stores at the end of their infancy period they may be at risk of developing iron deficiency if they are put on unmodified cow's milk and instead of taking uh, other drinks if the child is solely fed on the cow's milk because we know that the milk is a poor source of iron so uh, and the iron is not that bioavailable so this can lead to iron deficiency among the toddlers so inclusion of iron rich foods such as green leafy vegetables or uh, taking a mixed diet which is a mixture of vegetarian and non vegetarian origin because we know that uh, non vegetarian sources they contain uh, high bioavailable iron 
and uh, then deworming of the ch uh, child that is a must because it causes uh, anemia and then supplementation of iron folate and b12 is beneficial in this case and including enhancing factors of iron absorption for example taking vitamin c along with uh, green leafy vegetables or the other foods in the diet and uh, controlling the inhibiting factors that is the high fiber or uh, do not uh, take tea or uh, tannin containing things along with the diet and all these factors they should uh, be helpful in controlling the anemia among children vitamin d it is a fat soluble vitamin that is essential for bone growth and health vitamin d deficiency can cause rickets which causes uh, bones to become softer and their shape changes so vitamin d it is also important in protecting toddlers against many infections the reasons uh, uh, for uh, vitamin d deficiency could be genetic differences or there could be lifestyle factors such as if there is less exposure to sunlight and the child is not going outside or uh, he is covering the skin or the child is using sunscreen while venturing in the sun or certain dietary habits such as replacing fortified infant formulas or the milk with the cow's milk uh, as the main drink before the child uh, is 1 year old so uh, things like that they cause vitamin d deficiency certain preschoolers with highly deficient diets and with poor reserves of vitamin a they might experience symptoms like night blindness xerothelmia bitered spot keratomalacia or increased susceptibility to infections now this deficiency of vitamin a can be prevented if the mother who is pregnant with the child takes good amount of vitamin a rich food that is taking uh, uh, green leafy vegetables or the yellow fruits and vegetables so this will ensure good reserves of vitamin a in the child and along with that once we start with the weaning or process of uh, baby we should start giving him the purees or the soups which contain good amount of vitamin a and after the child uh, is 1 year old we can always start with giving uh, yellow fruits or uh, yellow vegetables or the green leafy vegetables to enhance vitamin a in direct and precursor form poor growth and weight faltering it is relatively common in children with families uh, who are following in the middle or the low socio economic status the weight faltering usually occurs with, uh, before the 18 months that is one and a half year and it is most commonly found during the second six months of the life of the baby when the growth is very rapid and energy and nutrient requirements they are very high so the growth faltering it is often detected when the weight of the child that starts falling instead of going up instead of increasing weight it starts falling and height as well as weight of the child it needs to be measured in order to properly interpret the changes in the weight so it is not possible to detect the growth uh, faltering without using appropriate growth chart the important causes are children with diseases that increase the requirement for energy and nutrients such as uh, the children who have cystic fibrosis such children they are likely to grow poorly unless they receive nutritional supplementation and there are other medical problems such as constipation or gastroesophageal reflux when the food is not uh, taken properly and dental caries can be the reason for poor food intake in the toddlers and this can lead to poor growth and the most common cause of growth faltering is insufficient manage of intake of variety of food to support normal growth this uh, variety of reasons which causes inadequate intake 
they could be behavioral or they could be socioeconomic or some organic factors they also play a part so it is important to detect the reason for inadequate intake some toddlers they will be maybe picky eater and they may having they may be having difficulty in accepting new foods so all these conditions they can cause growth faltering the milk or deciduous teeth they help with the development of speech and allow optimum growth of the jaw so that the permanent teeth can grow and develop naturally now calcium vitamin d fluoride they are essential nutrients for normal tooth development fluoride it strengthens the dental enamel and makes it resistant to attack by bacteria which are involved in causing tooth decay the causes of dental problem or the tooth decay they are caused by frequent consumption of foods or liquids which contain simple sugars and sticky foods that leave a residue in the mouth and around the teeth and uh, along with that prolonged uh, bottle feeding particularly when the toddler is allowed to fall asleep with the bottle in the mouth and uh, this can cause this problem and saliva in the mouth it helps to protect against the tooth decay but during sleep the saliva flow uh, and the swallowing action that declines making clearance of uh, material whatever is there in the mouth that is less frequent and along with that frequent eating say more than 7 meals or snacks per day it is also associated with the increased risk of developing dental caries among toddlers and erosion of uh, tooth enamel is another dental problem which is seen in the young children this is caused by frequent consumption of acidic foods and drinks such as fruit juice drinks squashes fizzy soft drinks pure fruit juice can also erode teeth uh, and therefore it should be diluted when given to the toddlers the oral hygiene should begin before the age of 1 year so the parents they should clean the toddler's teeth with soft toothbrush and toothpaste uh, containing fluoride if the drinking water is not fluoridated otherwise fluoride free paste they should be used at least twice a day and regular checkups by the dentist they are also recommended and uh, similarly sweet uh, food and drinks they should be restricted to four eating occasions in a day for example three meals and one snack overweight and obesity it is a very common nutritional disorder among preschoolers and children it can be caused by imbalance in the amount of energy consumed in food and expended in the activity the children who eat excessive amount of energy rich foods and who are inactive they become obese and the excess energy it is laid down as fat inside their bodies so both the percentage of body fat and the body mass index it should decrease during the toddler years so to measure overweight and obesity and track it we can use bmi centile charts and the consumption of concentrated sources of fats and sugars it may need to be reduced and exercise may be encouraged increasing the physical activity it is an essential part of the management of overweight and obesity among all the age groups so therefore the toddlers they should uh, go for at least one hour of moderate to vigorous physical activity daily constipation is defined as infrequent passage of hard stools often with difficulty or discomfort now the causes of constipation could be passage of hard stools which is often painful and child may deliberately withhold them especially if they have anal fissures or some toddlers they develop phobia about opening their bowels during toilet training or some rare disorders of the gut that cause constipation such as hair springs disease they are also associated with the poor appetite 
growth faltering and some children with some developmental disorders such as cerebral palsy they are prone to constipation similarly a majority of the toddlers constipation it is caused by poor diet so the two most important dietary factors which are associated with the development of constipation are insufficient fluid and dietary fiber intake so the dietary fiber intake when it is low and the child is taking too much of a refined flour or any kind of diet which does not contain fiber uh, such as if the diet is missing in whole grain cereals fruits and vegetables this can cause constipation toddlers therefore they need at least 1 liter of fluid from the drinks each day and failure to drink sufficient uh, fluid it can contribute to constipation therefore at least one serving of fiber rich food should also be given at each meal time to protect against the development of constipation so the food which are uh, naturally rich in fiber they uh, as we know they are whole grain cereal pulses fruits and vegetables but unprocessed bran or the fiber enriched cereal they should not be given to the child but at times the child can go with little laxatives or the stool softeners so that the constipation can be relieved and later on the diet can be corrected children who eat little food or who consume a diet which is low in nutrient dense foods Uh, that is milk meat fish bread or fortified breakfast cereal and fruits and vegetables they may also be at risk of other micronutrient deficiencies along with constipation food allergy is seen most commonly in the early life so the symptoms of uh, true food allergy can include skin reactions such as dermatitis or eczema then gastrointestinal symptoms such as reflux vomiting diarrhea and respiratory symptoms such as wheezing and the most common of uh, food allergens in toddlers diet are cow's milk egg wheat peanuts tree nuts and soya about 90% of the infants with the cow's milk protein allergy they recover by the age of 3 years a diet which eliminates an important food items such as milk or wheat which is usually recommended during the food allergies so such diet they should contain adequate nutrients for the growth and development of preschooler protein energy malnutrition it is defined as range of pathological conditions which are arising from consistent lack of varying proportion of protein and calorie malnutrition which is occurring most frequently among the infants and young children and often it is associated with the infections so the peak prevalence of kwashior kor which is a type of pem it is frequently seen in the age group of 2 to 3 years whereas merasmus it is commonly found in 1 to 2 year old children the causes could be poverty of the mother who is not able to provide sufficient food to the child which results in undernutrition or if starchy gruel made from the local staple food it is given and the child is either able to meet the calorie needs only or the food is not able to meet even the calorie density this can lead to pem or there is abrupt weaning or the late weaning ignorance of the mother that can also lead to underweight and then malnutrition it can result in less enzyme synthesis by the body of the child and there will be less appetite which will lead to less consumption of food and this will form a vicious circle of malnutrition and infection and chronic infections like primary infections they can result to anorexia the child will not uh, be ready to eat anything and similarly some infestations by the uh, escariaceae especially the giardiasis this can lead to anorexia 
this could be manifested in three or four forms the first form is kawashiyor kar now this results when either there is prolonged breastfeeding or late and inadequate weaning which leads to low intake of energy the child may be able to meet the energy requirement in some cases but uh, he may not be able to take good quality of protein in his diet and this results in classic symptoms of kawashiyorkar so the compromised growth will be seen in this case but there will be preservation of some most organ functions by the child this common symptoms are the face will be having some kind of edema and uh, there will be edema on the lower limbs and uh, there will be failure to thrive there will be anorexia there could be diarrhea or the child will be showing apathy he will not be that alert or there will be hypo or hyper pigmentation on the skin or he might be having soft thin hair or he will be having multiple b complex uh, deficiencies such as angular stomatitis or chilosis and the child may be anemic the second manifestation could be marasmic kawashiyorkar which is a mixture of some features of kawashiyorkar and some features of marasmus the marasmus is uh, found in usually full term babies who are having low birth weight or babies who are pre term babies which are followed by early weaning or inadequate feeding or they live in unhygienic conditions and they suffer from infections so what happens in this case there will be chronic energy deficiency they are small and they are unable to meet the increasing demand of the body they are not getting adequate energy they are not getting adequate protein also so the chronic energy deficiency failure to thrive will be seen they will not be able to gain the expected weight also they will be irritable they could be having diarrhea there will be no subcutaneous mass so they will be having dehydrated skin wrinkly skin the muscles are very weak in such uh, uh, children there is lack of subcutaneous fat so the limbs they will appear as skin and bones only another uh, uh, deficiency it can be seen as nutritional dwarfing so what is nutritional dwarfing here because of consistent low intake of energy and nutrients the weight of the child will be compromised and along with that the body will adapt and the child will be having short stature also so the child of this uh, deficiency or this condition he will appear younger than his usual age mates the dietary management of all this time of type of pem cases it involves similar treatment so the diet usually includes a locally available staple foods and uh, inexpensive and easily digestible foods they are given it consists of minimum 100 ml of milk daily and if the patient can afford more milk and eggs can be given and cereal to pulses in the ratio of 3 is to 1 it is suggested and diet should be evenly distributed throughout day consisting of all type of food groups and the quantity of the food known to the child it is increased and energy it is increased by adding oil and banana and similar fruits and traditional foods such as rice khichdi tuber legumes egg fish green leafy vegetables seasonal fruits they are introduced gradually when the condition of the child improves let's summarize what we have studied about the nutrition care of preschoolers in the first lecture we had studied about the growth and development during the early years of life then we studied about the nutritional requirements of macro and micronutrients then we studied about the relationship of nutrition and infections and then we studied about the food requirements of preschoolers and 
then eventually we studied about what are the important dietary guidelines to improve the nutritional status of the preschoolers and lastly we focused on the nutritional problems of the preschoolers this finishes the nutrition care during the early childhood that is preschoolers we shall be studying about the nutrition care of children from 6 to 10 years of age in the next lecture thank you very much